So, I became a Netflix addict this past week. And there's something you should know about me. I never watch TV shows for the sole purpose of it becoming addicting, which happened this past week. But it all changed when I started watching the new show called You. Maybe you've heard of it. There are scary people in the world, Beck. My mom too. And I'm slightly embarrassed to kind of tell everyone about this, but I finished both the seasons in seven days. <clears throat> that got me really interested and fascinated by the fact that Netflix can actually keep people's attention for such a long time, especially for someone who doesn't watch shows like myself. What I'm curious about is what does Netflix do to keep us engaged in their website? What does binge watching Netflix do to our brains and how can we build that healthy relationship with Netflix so we can have a sustainable life? Let's find out. <clears throat> Ah, that iconic logo. What's interesting is the fact that Netflix feels like it came to fame in the past decade. They've actually been around since 1997, and they first started with shipping out DVDs. You remember that? We used to watch movies through DVDs. Interesting. Anyway, fast forward to 2020, Netflix has over 150 million users now, according to Fortune. And Netflix constitutes the 15% of the world's internet bandwidth. Not only that, but according to an article by Times, in 2015, 42 billion hours was watched. That's an average of one hour and 23 minutes per day for each user. That means I'm not the only crazy person that watches Netflix for hours on end. Let's try to dig a little bit further. There's something about this layout and user experience that sucks people in. So the first step in understanding your addiction is actually gaining a good understanding of the platform itself. So it might sound very simple and very basic, but bear with me because I think this is a very crucial step in actually understanding your addiction and how to curb that Netflix addiction. So let's hop onto Netflix right now and then let's go through all the different things that they do to kind of wrap, rope you in somehow. Okay, so for starters, if you look at the homepage here, um, they have all these visual appealing trailers. So instead of a just a classic poster um, or a thumbnail, they're showing you like clips of the show or the movie. So this is a way for them to rope you in right away and get you interested in the thing that they're trying to pretty much sell you. Um, and as you're scrolling through, um, you can kind of go here and click on a, um, like a thumbnail and it immediately goes into a video trailer again, a preview of the show that you're trying to watch or you might watch. Again, I know this stuff is very basic, but I think it's really important to actually say it out loud and actually understand why they're doing it instead of mindlessly just going on Netflix and just accepting it because I think that's the first step of curbing any addiction. They're also doing things when you're watching a show that you can skip the intro and go right into the show. They're also doing something called autoplay, which means that they're autoplaying the next episode within five seconds after finishing the last one. These are all techniques that they're using to rope you in and reduce any kind of friction between you and leaving the platform, which is really interesting if you think about it. This is where it gets even more interesting. As I was doing my research on how Netflix personalizes their homepage just for you, these images that you see right here, these thumbnails, they're all designed and personalized for you and your personality traits. So they might have hundreds of thumbnails or they might have a set of thumbnails and they determine which thumbnail is best for your personality type, which is interesting. This is where it gets even more interesting, which is a trending now. Um, you would think that trending now is like this one opportunity, this one row, where you can connect to the greater community of Netflix and see what people are actually watching. But even trending now is personalized for your personality and what you like to watch on Netflix. So it is a little skewed. Again, all of these things are really important to recognize because Netflix knows, according to Business Insider, and Netflix knows they have 90 seconds from the moment you log into Netflix until you find something. Or if you don't find something within 90 seconds, you're gonna leave. So they're trying everything they can to kind of rope you in. Again, I know this stuff is very basic. You may have kind of thought about it in passing when you're on Netflix, but to saying it out loud, to see me talking about it is really beneficial in terms of curbing that Netflix addiction so you can have a healthier relationship with it, which I think is a good thing.
To start, we have to recognize that binge watching has a huge impact on our brain and our mental well-being. To think about binge watching, we have to think about these two things, a slot machine and dopamine. Because all the companies that you adore, they use this idea of slot machines and they use this concept of dopamine hits, which is a neurotransmitter in your brain that makes you want something more because it makes you feel good to kind of keep your attention and keep you coming back to their platform. And it has a huge detrimental impact to your brain because it is literally acts as a drug. And like any drug, there are side effects that come along with getting a dopamine hit when you're on these platforms like Netflix. It also doesn't help that when you're on Netflix, when you log into a show, all the episodes are in front of you at your disposal. It's no longer an age where you have to wait a whole week to see the next episode. So when you watch one episode, you can literally just keep watching to figure out and find out what happens at the end which is not really great when you have this concept of slot machines and dopamine to kind of build that habit loop of being addicted to Netflix. If you want to know what the side effects of binge watching actually is, you'd have to look no further than myself. This past week was really interesting. When I was watching Netflix, literally my desire for doing anything else kind of disappeared. Writing in my journal, exercising, meditating, even heck, going to the bathroom or making myself a meal, that desire went away. All I wanted to do was get in bed, open up Netflix and keep watching these episodes. And my desire to keep getting that dopamine hit of what happens in the next episode, in the next episode, led me to staying up until one or two o'clock in the morning a few nights this past week, which is really not healthy. There's a lot of long-term impacts of this type of lifestyle. Not only that, but when I finished up the two seasons of You, the next morning I had, a, I had this headache and I literally was having a hangover from this constant dopamine hit. And I think that was so interesting because the next day I kind of was like feeling a little down in the sense that I was like worn out, I was fatigued. And that is a sign that I was going all in on something just so I can get that dopamine hit to only be hung over and have a day of ruined productivity. Again, there's a lot of impacts to your mental health when you do binge watch something. It might feel great at the time, but ultimately it will leave you down with a headache and yeah, don't do it, please. So let's be 100% honest. There's no way I'm going to be boycotting Netflix anytime soon. And I'm pretty sure you agree too with your personal lifestyle and habits as well when it comes to Netflix. So we have to meet somewhere in the middle. So it isn't a good look when I first Googled healthy habits of Netflix that nothing really came up. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna be giving three tips that I came up with that I think are very effective and add a lot of friction between you and binge watching five hours of any show. So number one, so I find that tracking your time on anything that you're working on is super effective. And this app called Toggle, which I've had on my laptop for the longest time, and I use it to track time for client work or other work I'm doing, is a really effective way of tracking your Netflix watch time. All you have to do is literally download it and it is the fastest and easiest way for you to quickly write watching Netflix, hit start. And then as you're watching a show or a movie on Netflix, that timer is running up. So having that indication of how long you've been doing a certain task will stop you from watching five or six hours of Netflix or whatever, because you're gonna start feeling bad that you've been doing nothing but Netflix for the last three, four hours. So that's a super effective way of visually telling yourself, I've been on this platform for way too long and it is time to do something more productive with my life. Number two, there's actually a feature on Netflix if you go on settings to stop autoplay uh, for the next episode. I think this is a significant tip, especially for myself, because that adds so much more friction to you watching another episode right after. Go under settings, under profile and personal settings, I think it is. Check off, turn off, autoplay, and trust me, it's gonna make a big difference. Number three, this tactic I've used in the past and it's been super effective, which is called positive reinforcement. So essentially what I'm saying is changing our perception on the platform, because this platform is gonna be here. We're going to wanna to go into this platform and watch and entertain ourselves. I think the best way to change our perception and relationship with Netflix is by simply giving ourselves a statement saying, after I finish goal A or task A, I'm going to watch an episode. It sounds silly, I understand that, but when you're trying to curb addiction for or any kind of addiction, these small, very simple steps can go a very long way. Because essentially what you're doing is changing your perception of Netflix. You're no longer feeling bad when you're on Netflix uh, as this thing as, oh man, I'm not, I should be doing something else. You, you're changing your perception to thinking, yes, I'm on Netflix because 
I accomplished something. There's a lot of things that you can do, but these three steps I think are super crucial in adding more friction between you and Netflix, but also changing your perception and your relationship with Netflix. Because I don't think Netflix is necessarily a bad thing. I think what's really bad about Netflix is the fact that they've made it so easy for us to just binge watch five, six episodes at one time. I think that's bad. So if we can find friction to add between us and watching five or six episodes and just treat it as something that, you know, I'm gonna treat myself once in a while, it will go a long way. So at the end of the day, I have zero regrets of what I did last week because one, I know this isn't a normal occurrence for me. And two, I have metrics in my life. You know, I've talked about this in my past videos. I like to measure what I'm doing every single week. As long as I'm hitting those metrics, I'm okay with doing whatever else in my free time, whether it be watching a lot of Netflix or going out and eating or whatever it is. So for me, I'm grateful that I experienced this because 1A, I made a video out of this, which is awesome. Uh, but B, I'm just, just incredibly fascinated and trying to learn more about technology that we interact with on an everyday basis because I think these technologies are there to help us, but they're also there as a trap for us to not do our best work and understanding that and really harnessing the power um, of these companies as a good thing, as a, as a tool instead of a crutch is ultimately what I'm trying to go for. So that's why I made this video. That's why I'm experimenting and exploring all these different platforms. So I'm grateful. Thank you, you. Great show, by the way. Really great. Looking forward to season three. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm Hersha Patel. For those who have not watched any of my videos, this is the first video you've ever watched. I am Herschel. I like making videos about answering a quick curiosity and inspiring others to chase their curiosities because curiosity equals to a happier life. Um, feel free to like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.